Hello, everyone. Um, I'm here to talk about Maker. I'm going to give a short talk. Um, before I start, it's very likely that not everyone here has heard of Maker, so um, I'll just explain. Maker is a contract system um, whose function is going to be to create the DAI stablecoin and the associated credit system. And the properties of the DAI that make it awesome is that, well, it's initially pegged to the SDR, but it's uh, deflationary. It's collateralized in excess, so there is more value locked up backing the DAI at all times than there are uh, the, the total value of the DAI. And it's eventually trust-free, which means that uh, it uses the most uh, current trust-free mechanisms available to get data feeds um, and to do the, uh, the pegging mechanics um, that is available at the time. So this talk is not going to be about the actual stablecoin mechanics, um, because that is not appropriate for a 15-minute talk. And um, it, we have a great white paper dedicated to exactly that. So instead, uh, today we're going to talk about um, what, the, what, the, what the white paper doesn't go into, which is how the actual contract system is designed. So what are the different components? And then I'm also going to mention how we can uh, go, through, uh, go about deploying this contract system over time and start getting some utility out of it even before the whole thing is complete. Um, so first, I'm, I'm going to introduce basically what the version zero of uh, the maker contract system uh, is going to look like. So this is uh, an authority contract, and this is basically a command and control pattern um, that we use throughout the maker system. Basically, every single contract um, I didn't draw arrows because there would be too many. They all point to uh, this one. They have a reference. And then every single uh, protected function, uh, you use a modifier that basically asks, OK, is this caller allowed to call me at this entry point? And the authority says yes or no. And the authority is bootstrapped with uh, one, some other contract that already has permission to call the uh, set can call function mm -hmm. on the authority. So basically, it has an implicit owner uh, at the start. So the components here, so uh, yeah, that's the authority. This is the maker asset platform is what this stands for. It's a uh, conceptual grouping of the registry of assets, um, which all share the same interface and semantics that, uh, that we need to be able to use them in the, uh, in, in the uh, uh, collateral debt mechanism. Um, so here you can see how we uh, also separate the data and the controller. And this is extremely useful because, for example, right now these controllers are the simplest possible asset control uh, that there is. It basically has a single transfer function and a single event that it fires on that transfer. Um, but, but we're quickly uh, converging on some sort of uh, more reasonable asset standards and ones that are more powerful and actually let you programmatically uh, do things with, with your assets. So we might want to swap out the behavior of the controller, uh, but then keep, uh, keep all the balances in place. Um, and so. Well, what this means is that the correct way to actually interact with the maker system is to use what's called a maker user uh, mix-in contract, which it's just a bunch of internal functions and modifiers which uh, help you traverse the maker system. So for example, you would inherit from the, uh, the maker user contract. It doesn't add any overhead unless you actually use, for example, get assets. And then the, the maker user, uh, the, uh, you know, it's a library we publish. And it has all the details about how to actually look up in the registry of the controller. OK, so this is what uh, the, the initial version look, uh, might look like. So now let's look at what the final version uh, might look like. Um, so the first thing you might notice is the mistake that I made that I only noticed like one minute ago. Uh, obviously, this contract system is not an off-chain service. This is all um, still just smart contracts. Um, but each of these is, a, is, is now a cluster. So we've zoomed out. Um, this map is what you just saw. And I, I, I exposed uh, the assets still as little contracts so you can see how uh, MKR and DAI in particular are wired up directly to the uh, CDP engine, which is the collateralized debt position engine, which you should read the white paper uh, to understand what that is. But it's basically the, the fundamental building block uh, that creates and destroys the DAI. Um, so this, this is an example. Basically, you'll notice uh, the second thing is that there's no more nexus in this picture. So in the previous uh, slide, uh, I said that Nexus was like the implicit owner of the maker authority. But some, some, somewhere along the line, uh, this, this uh, is going to be transferred first to MKR stakeholder, the, the stakeholder vote directly. Um, but then at some point, they're going to also realize that it's wise to put this intermediate governance contract 
um, between themselves and admin rights, which is basically the ability to modify uh, the authority's um, permissions. Um, and so uh, but basically the idea here is that um, this is an example of how ADAPT can start out uh, highly centralized and very trustful, and then uh, over time you can basically update it to uh, lock it, lock down some of its uh, behavior, and then um, any, you know, why, why I think we can call Maker trustless, even though there's still a governing body that sort of has to set high-level monetary policy, is because there's this uh, governance contract where, where MKR holders can provably restrict their own powers, and, and the, the most uh, popular example for that is uh, the time delayed uh, admin action. So if the MKR holders are going to do some administrative action on the system, uh, everyone has maybe a week at, at near the start, and then maybe it could be up to a year uh, if the system is running and is very stable for a long time. Um, so I think I have enough time to, to basically just actually describe how these system, uh, parts interact. So the, the um, uh, you know, here, these are all simply uh, registry entries. Um, the MKR, uh, this talks to the governance uh, to try to uh, ca cause changes to the system. Uh, that might affect who the feed providers are. Uh, it might affect uh, more basic stuff, uh, like in the contract permission wiring. Um, and it also might affect just the monetary policy inside the CDP engine. Um, and then the CDP engine has unique permissions to uh, spend money out of the vault, uh, which is um, the... Uh, it's basically where the insurance pool is of collected die, and then it's also where uh, assets that might have been emergency bailed out, uh, they go there before they're auctioned off. Um, okay, so I, I also want to go ahead and uh, show this part, which is that um, another really important component of the maker system is that there are several um, incentivized actions that have to happen quickly and reliably. And so, you know, we say, like, okay, the theory is if, if it's profitable, then um, you, we should expect it to happen automatically. But, in, but we want to actually uh, make sure this happens. So Nexus is creating a, um, I guess, a software stack uh, for uh, basically a single node which will try to make as much money as possible off of Ethereum because it will be aware of all the different incentivized actions that it uh, can take, for example, uh, the margin calls, or the, uh, the more accurate word is the collateral redemption in the CDPs, that's an example of something that needs to happen automatically, but it's actually profitable for the person to use. So this is an example. Uh, um, oh yeah, another, another great example is like um, how you know, the alarm clock app also has incentivized actions, so there's no, you know, we, we would uh, bundle that into, into the uh, keeper stack as well. And so, um, yeah, so, all this is great, um, but this this is a really this is a really long way off, and I and I always uh, hate to tell people these really conservative estimates for when the die, as described in the white paper, is going to be launched. Um, but I'm really happy to announce that we have identified a strategy for making um, an, uh, a series of die releases which are increasingly trustless as time goes on. So the, the, the first mechanism, uh, you might have to trust this completely, and we might even do whitelisting just to avoid any, any problems with that. Uh, but then as we, um, as we can make it more and more trustless, then uh, even if the exact mechanism changes, um, as long as you make the, say the right guarantees and as long as you basically have enough money to, back, to, to buffer the buyback from one type into the other, uh, you can... Uh, basically do this transition behind the scenes and anyone who uses a die in a smart contract, they don't even have to uh, be aware that this transition is happening. So um, this is exciting because it basically, uh, there are a lot of people who, they just, they want a stable coin, but they, they just want like a small amount and they just want to do a simple proof of concept and it's not going to be an app that uh, is going to be holding a ton of money and it doesn't require trust. And so I'm happy to announce that uh, this is possible. And astute uh, viewers would have noticed that in the version zero, there is a die uh, balance database and a die controller. Um, and so that version zero is going to be uh, happening tonight. So we're having a, our second ever maker meetup um, and a deploy party. Uh, it's going to be at King's Arm Pub, um, but we're going to meet um, outside here at 4.15 and then go over there at 4.30, so you're all welcome to join us. We're going to deploy 
the MKR controller and uh, balance database and the DAI controller and balance database and all the associated, uh, and all the other stuff you saw in the first version. There, there's not actually going to be DAI created, unfortunately, but you can start writing your contracts as if it is created. Um, and the MKR uh, uh, is going to be issued and made liquid, so anyone here that might have uh, participated in our private sales, you actually have your asset is um, liquid on chain uh, tonight. So that's the end of my talk. I hope to see you guys at the meetup, and thank you so much for listening.